Oh, Mackie, come back this way. Like, drivers here will run you down. <laughs> yeah, I'm not good drivers. Ohio goes in my school and Ichiwa Kongbangwa for whenever you're listening to the Joshi Pod, your weekly podcast about the world of Japanese women's wrestling. Joshi Wrestling. I'm your host, Eric Howard, coming to you from beautiful San Diego, California. What an amazing week of wrestling it's been. I hope everybody made it home safe from Japan. I really enjoyed living vicariously through you all. Uh, it was great to see all the uh, online social media uh, tweets and posts and stuff and pictures. It was wonderful. Thank you guys all for sharing. As always, I want to thank you guys for listening to last week's episode with Avery. She was really great. Fell in love with her right away. Uh, I'm a huge fan of her more, hers more now than I ever was before. Uh, if you haven't listened to last week's episode, go back and give it a listen. And I promise you, you will fall in love with Avery as well. I'd also like to encourage you guys to please subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, we've had a pretty good 10-week run of guests so far pretty happy with it on this week's show we do have the three count headlines of the week including a gaijin making maki ito ugly cry we review the terrific tokyo joshi pro show from january 4th at kurik at home which was made evented by yuka sakazaki and miyu yamashita in an undercard match with a pinata we look ahead to shows this week in japan and i hope a lot of the promotions are catching their breath after this wild wild couple weeks uh, we also look uh, further ahead to see where Joshi performers will be performing outside of Japan. Uh, highlighted by the Wrestle Kingdom 3 show tomorrow night in London. Speaking of that, in our big main event interview, we have Dan Reed from Eve Riot Girls of Wrestling. It's interesting audio. We caught up with him while he was walking the streets of London with Maki Ito and Yuka Sakazaki. Uh, you can hear those two in the background a couple times. And uh, you can also hear the ambiance of the uh, streets of London. Uh, like I said earlier, Eve has a big show tomorrow night. Eve Wrestle Kingdom 3. Uh, it's available on Fight TV. Uh, I think you're going to have fun with that uh, unique uh, chat with him as he's uh, walking down the streets of London. Without further delay, let's get into the biggest headlines from this past week. And it's brought to you, by all, as always, by Quiet Wyatt Designs. If you need a logo, t-shirt, wrestling gear, Snapchat filter, or anything else, please reach out to Nolan and the team at Quiet Wyatt Designs. Search for them on Facebook, Q-U-I-E-T-W-Y-A-T-T, one word, designs. Uh, you can also find some of their products on Redbubble. Uh, if you're going to be on the Jericho Cruise, keep an eye out for Nolan, as he'll be on the Jericho Cruise as well. Headline number one. I want to say, since I came to Japan, the first time in 2015. My dream has always been to become a champion. Today, I make history. Thunder Rosa is a champion. Thunder Rosa defeated Maki Ito on January 5th at Itabashi Green Hall to win the International Princess Championship. Rosa became the first non-Japanese to hold that title. Thunder Rosa is on a really good run right now. She's one of the breakout stars of NWA Power. She's turned herself into a really, really good wrestler. And I'm working on getting her on the show when she gets back from Japan. Congratulations, La Meta Meta. Headline number two. You're leaving, but don't say sorry. Sorry announced on the January 4th show at Yokohama Radiant Hall that she'll be leaving the Diana promotion and heading to the United States in February. It's long been rumored she's going to wind up at the WWE. She did uh, meet with Triple H and take pictures with him back in uh, last year in 2019 uh, when the WWE toured Japan. Let's hope she can get a few dream matches in before she heads overseas. The announcement by Sari overshadowed the fact that uh, Ayako Sato defeated Sari in 1858 to win the World Women Pro Wrestling Diana title. Headline number three. The Tokyo Dome was their kingdom. Arisa Hoshiki and Mayu Itani defeated Julia and Hannah Kimura in the dark match on the first night of the Wrestle Kingdom at the Tokyo Dome. Not sure the match will ever see the light of day officially, uh, but it did seem to uh, receive pretty decent reviews from uh, fans in the crowd. Uh, not all who were uh, uh, stardom or Joshi wrestling fans. Uh, there's also talk about uh, Tokyo, uh, New Japan running in uh, Madison Square Garden, and you got to think that the uh, to uh, stardom women will be on that show as well. In more stardom news, Oedo Tai continues their rebuild. On January 3rd, Saki Kashima became part of Oedo Tai. Poor Mayu can't keep any friends. 
Kashima said she was tired of living in Mayu's shadow, and now she's starting to dress like uh, Natsu, which is not a bad thing. And uh, it's fun to see uh, the new Oedo Tai reforming after losing Hazuki and uh, Miyagi and about to lose uh, Kagetsu as well. And finally, in stardom news, they've announced a high-speed tournament. Azumi, Starlight Kid, Def Yamasan, Layla Hirsch, and Zoe Sky will face each other in round-robin format. The top two will fight for the high-speed Grand Prix Championship. The show of the week this week is the Tokyo Joshi Pro Show from January 4th at Korokan Hall. It aired live on the DDT streaming service. Mr. Haku, who runs the DDT underscore ENG Twitter handle, is a godsend when watching these shows. He live tweets translations, so uh, I know what's going on. <laughs> In the opener, uh, Haruna Neko and Suzume defeated Mahiro Kiryu and Sina Shiori. Uh, it was a good opener, a fun uh, opener. It was uh, Sina's debut. Um, she did a fine job in her opening match. She, she took the loss, but uh, pretty uh, uh, high-profile place to, to make your debut, and she did fine. The second match was pretty interesting. Uh, they had a pinata hanging over the ring, and the loser has to change their name for a month, and Shoko Nakajima defeated Hyper Masao. Uh, this was a bit of a cluster at times. <laughs> they both were able to bring a weapon to the ring, and Masao brought Mr. Koda uh, as her weapon, the most powerful man in Tokyo Joshi Pro. Uh, she was able to convince him to do that after she stole his idol concert tickets and bribed him to be a weapon and would give it back after the match. Uh, Shoko brought some plastic Godzilla-type kaiju figures. Uh, there were some funny spots in the match. You know they landed onto the um, those plastic figures, and I'm sure that didn't feel too good. There's also a cute spot where Misao had rolled up Nakajima in a blanket, trapping her for a while. Uh, Nakajima eventually got to the uh, ladder and pulled out the sash, and now Hyper Misao must change her name for a month. The next match was uh, two of the tallest women in Joshi wrestling, uh, wrestling for the DDT Ironman heavyweight title. Uh, Saki Akai won that belt uh, at a DDT show. On this Tokyo Joshi Pro show, she defeated Yuki Kamafuku, uh, again, the two tallest women in Joshi wrestling. Uh, there was a lot of legs in this match. Um, they had a really good match. It went about nine minutes. Both had near falls near the end, but uh, Saki ended up getting the win, and the two embraced after the match. It was a, a really good match. Uh, it might have been Yuki's uh, best match I've seen her in in a while, and uh, the crowd got really behind her, which was nice to see. The next match was a six-man match, which was a pretty random team of Aja Kong, Palm Harajuku, and Raku defeated Mina Shirakawa, Mirami Mayumi, and Yuna Manase in about 13 minutes. Before the match in the back, Aja Kong picks Pin Saki to become the DDT Iron Man heavyweight me- Iron Man heavy metal champion, and she would be defending it in this match. Aja can't move as well as she used to, but uh, she was in there trying, and uh, the crowd it seemed really into her and enjoyed her being in this match, and just the uh, the fun of seeing Aja Kong team with Harajuku and Raku uh, was pretty fun. Uh, <laughs> she did uh, do the uh, Goodnight Express with Raku and, and Palm. Aja, Palm, and Raku got the win, and after the match in the back, Saki surprisingly pinned Aja to win back the Iron Man title. The next match was the match of the night, I believe. Uh, really, really excellent match. Sari defeated Natsumi Maki in about 12 minutes. Uh, these two beat the snot out of each other. Um, this was Natsi, Natsumi's first match back after about four months dealing with a leg injury. And she kind of flexed it uh, when the match started just to remind the crowd that, you know, she's coming back from uh, uh, the injury. These two really tore into each other. A lot of forearms, a lot of kicks. Great back and forth. Uh, you can see why Sari is so valued abroad and in, in Japan as well. She's really so young and really, really talented. Uh, and Natsumi showed she's not very far behind. She was able to hang with Sari. But it was an excellent match. Match of the night. Uh, one of the probably the top matches of the, uh, the week for uh, Joshi Wrestling. The next match was Thunder Rosa defeating Mizuki in nine minutes. This was a showcase to show what kind of a monster Thunder Rosa is. Like I said earlier, she's improved so much in the last year. Uh, By the end of the match, you know the way she won, that she was going to be challenging for one of the belts. Uh, She looked good. Not a super duper match, but Thunder Rosa looked really good. And it achieved what it needed to with showing Thunder Rosa as the, the dominant force. And in the next match, the International Princess title match, Maki Ito defeated Hikari Noah. The one and only <laughs> Maki Ito sang her way out. She got a huge reception from the crowd. You could see a ton of foreigners in the first few rows. Uh, this for sure elevated Hikari even in the loss. She had a terrific match with Ito. Uh, Ito is such a 
good character, but I feel her wrestling is, just gets better and better. Uh, I think it's becoming underrated almost for her now. She's uh, improved so much. Uh, the Ito special gets Maki the win, and after the match... Thunder Rosa comes out and challenges Ito for the International Princess title. And as you heard earlier in the show, you know Thunder Rosa wins the belt the next day. And go out of your way to see the pictures of Maki after the match where she loses to Thunder Rosa. Uh, there's definitely ugly cry there. Uh, she was pretty emotional after losing the title. In the semi-main event, Miyu Watanabe and Rika Tatsumi defeated the Bakaretsu sisters, Nadoka Tenma and Yuki Aino. In under, just a little under 14 minutes, I'm more and more convinced Miyu Watanabe is going to be a superstar. She does that giant swing faster than anybody I've ever seen before. Um, this is the third time the Bakaretsu sisters have challenged for the titles and have come up short, pun intended. And in the big main event, Yuka Sakazaki defeated Miyu Yamashita to retain her Princess of Princess title in about 20 minutes. They fought all over Kurikan Hall. If you haven't seen it yet, watch the clip of Miyu sliding, Miyu sliding down the uh, steps at Kurikan Hall on a table. She looked legitimately terrified. Um, these two had a terrific match, as expected. I, I thought there would be a title change, but there was not. Uh, Yuka had to fly pretty far and, and twist pretty far to get that magical girl splash at the end to pick up the win. And uh, she, these two are terrific. They have good chemistry together. Uh, I think overall the show was tremendous. I'll probably give it a 9 out of 10 if I had to give it a rating. Tokyo Joshi Pro is putting on some really good shows, and uh, I think you guys should check it out. The DDT service is is worth the money. Um, you can see the DDT shows. You can see the uh, some of the other smaller companies with DDT, and also the Tokyo Joshi Pro uh, shows as well. So you get if you're not into just Joshi, if you're into Joshi and the guys as well, you can see uh, some of the um, other DDT promotions. Uh, they put a couple of Gato Move shows up on the DDT service recently as well. Oh, hey guys, what's going on? My name is Steve. I'm the host of the last podcast you'd want. Do you like movies? Well, that's what we talk about. I bring a guest on, maybe more than one, and we talk about movies they like, movies they don't like, movies from their childhood, movies they give them nightmares. Just some of the few topics that we talk about on the last podcast you'd want. So if you like movies, you could find us on Apple Podcasts, you could find us on Google Podcasts, you could find us on most major podcast outlets. Tip the veal, try the staff, check out the show. Let's take a look at the shows this week in Japan. On the 11th, Stardom has a doubleheader in Osaka. On the morning show, Riho takes on Andres Miyagi. Also on the 11th, Gato Move is in Inchikaya Chocolate Square. The big match on that show is May Saruga and Antonio Honda facing Tokiko Kihari and Chris Brooks. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh, Chris Brooks just announced that he will be with DDT in Japan for all of 2020, which is exciting for him to see him uh, maybe become somewhat of a regular at Gato Move. Uh, he, He adds a whole lot to those shows. Also on the 11th, Ice Ribbon is at their dojo in Saitama. On the 12th, Pure J is at Shinkiba First Ring. Stardom is in Shizuoka. Tokyo Joshi Pro is at Itabashi Green Hall. Uh, Sendai Girls has a show in Miyagi. Oz Academy is down south in Okinawa. The 13th, Ice Ribbons in Saitama, the Engineering Center. Gato moves in Ijikaya. And on the 14th, the Just Tap Out show, Takamichi Noku's promotion. Uh, it's at Kirkin Hall and features uh, Utami Hayashishida stepping outside of stardom for an evening and facing Micah. The two were supposed to meet earlier uh, last year, but uh, Utami injured her fingers and they had to re, uh, reschedule this match. Let's take a look and see where Joshi performers are performing outside of Japan. Sumi Sakai returns to Southern California tonight at the PCW Ultra Anniversary Show. She'll be defending her Ultra Women's Championship against Ruby Rays. Uh, She'll also be selling pictures for $5 at the show to help raise funds to get a promotion going in Vietnam. Southern California performer Viva Van is becoming a point person in that Vietnam project, and Sumi's trying to help raise some money for that. The Eve Riot Girls of Wrestling present Wrestle Queendom 3 is also on January uh, is on January 11th in London. Uh, we're going to talk about that here a little bit later in the show. But um, Maki Ito faces Session Moth Martina, and Yuka Sakazaki will face Lana Austin. I think there are a few standing room only seats available, but you can also catch it on Fight TV. 
uh, please do it. It's only about ten U.S. dollars to to watch that show. I'm gonna order it and, and watch it, and we'll talk about it. at least uh, the you can match the, and Maki match next week on the show. Announced this week, Tokyo Joshi Pro's Mina Shirakawa will be appearing in Madrid, Spain, for RCW Pro Wrestling on February 15th and 16th as part of the Japan Weekend. It's a, an event in Spain that celebrates Japanese culture. For more information on this, please visit JapanWeekend.com/Madrid. I think we're gonna see quite a few Joshi performers uh, getting out of Japan hopefully and uh, traveling abroad during the olympics and, and, and saying that now uh ice ribbons akane fujita will be coming to the united states from february 28th to april 3rd uh, if you'd like to book her on your show if you're a promoter uh, kikataru is helping her with that so you go to kikataru.booking at gmail.com and uh, she's out of uh, las vegas Tokyo Joshi Pro will be in Tampa, Florida for WrestleMania weekend on April 3rd at WrestleCon. They still haven't announced tickets yet, but uh, that information should be forthcoming real, real soon. This is the master of a thousand holds, Mike Quackenbush, and you're listening to The Joshi Pod. I want to thank you all again for downloading and listening to this episode of The Joshi Pod. If you'd like to follow the show on Twitter, you can at The Joshi Pod. We're also on Instagram at The Joshi Pod. And you can follow me at Eric San Diego. Please stay tuned for the interview with Dan Reed from Eve Riot Girls of Wrestling. And uh, we'll talk to you next week. Arigato gozaimasu. All right, in 2010, uh, Eve Riot Girls of Wrestling, a feminist punk rock wrestling promotion based in England, was born. And tomorrow night on Fight TV, you can catch Wrestle Queendom 3. I'd like to welcome to the show Dan Reed. Thank you for joining me. Uh, thanks for having us, man. I much appreciate it. Yeah. So uh, tell me exactly yeah, so what's going on in the background. I'm currently out. Um, Yuka and Mackie just landed, and so I'm just currently showing them the sights and sounds of, uh, of central London. We're currently in, uh, we're, where are we right now? Regent Street. We're in Regent Street. You got not you got anyone's got the London Monopoly board, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so how big of a relief is it when everybody shows up? Uh, massively. It's like, uh, I mean, the thing is, it's like we're one of the few who actually does get visas for the performers. So it's never, um, I, I, it's not like that I'm worrying on that side. Like I'm not having to worry about performers actually getting stopped. You more worry about um, massive delays. Do you know what I mean? And there mm-hmm. was... Um, there was a slight delay which caused a, a misconnection, but a, but they just sorted them out and got them on. It's one of these old things. It's like when you've been promoting as long as I have, you realise what's in case that happens, who's the best airlines to fly them with? Who are the best people to book with? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So today there was a misconnection, but it all got sorted. And it was like it made the difference. It only made like 50 minutes difference, you know. So I'm, I'm, I was relieved when that was the when that was the case. I like when like Kota Ibushi. Um, missed his connection and I got stressed to heck because he didn't let me know that he'd missed his connection and Kota is known for being somewhat of a wanderer <laughs> so and we were late getting there because we got stuck in traffic so we we get there late he's not there and we're like oh no we've had messages from all his friends in Japan saying you know keep an eye on him he's he, he just disappears at times so I'm thinking oh crumbs he's gone God knows where in London. There's a wild Kota Ibushi. Thankfully, he was actually just, you know, missed a connection flight and he was on the next one. So, <laughs> thankfully, that wasn't like that. Nice and easy this time. All right. So, you guys, I mean, are based out of England, but you guys are part of the Joshi wrestling scene because you guys book so much Joshi talent. Yeah. Why, why, yeah. why do you guys book so much Joshi talent? Well, it's just kind of like, we was, um, you know, I, I grew up. Um, you know, being a fan of um, Joshi Wrestling, you know, I got into the tape trading um, scene in the mid 90s. So, you know, getting uh, all Japan women, you know, shows um, was uh, a, a regular thing for us, you know, all Japan women, ECW, Michinoku Pro, those were all Japan. Um, you know, those were, you know, my, uh, my regular, you know, gets on the tape trading scene. So um, it just made sense when we were doing this that. Of course, I'm going to want to work with, um, you know, the, 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 the women wrestlers in, in Japan. You know, the whole idea is that you, you know, you present some of the best and you present, you know, and, you know, some of the best, you know, of right now, of the past and in the future. Uh, and so that's always been a key. And Emily, my wife, uh, who runs Eve um, with me, uh, she was uh, 
a trainee um, herself for a, a, a long while. Um, she was hugely inspired by, uh, obviously, the, the, the Jersey scene. It's not like it was a lot of this, you know, on the, on the Western side for her to be inspired by. Um, specifically, she was inspired by um, uh, JWP, uh, Command Bolshoi, specifically, and um, Azumi Hyaga. And, yeah, it, it's just an actual thing. So, like, I mean, we ran our first show in 2010, and in 2011, we were working with Ice Ribbon. It was just, it was always going to be, you know, it was always going to be that way. So, how, how did you guys get, how did you uh, reach the gap? Between you know wanting to have them on there and actually reaching out to them and, and making it happen. Oh, well, they reached out to me. Oh. Um, so like, uh, it's gonna sound like I'm up my own ass when I say this. I'm known over there for working with a number of you know international performers, and so um, and Eve had a, a, a had a good rep in terms of you know what the shows were like, what kind of performers we allow, what kind of performers we don't allow. You know, like working with people, so um, it was it was really easy because they they done the reaching out, not me. All right, so you have Yuka Sakazaki and Maki Ito there now. How yeah, did, yeah, right there. Tell them tell them the Joshi Pod says hello. <laughs> Joshi Pod says hello. The Joshi Podcast says hello. They say hi. <laughs> I actually met Maki back in September when I was in Japan. Um, uh, so, what? How did you get the relationship with Tokyo Joshi Pro to bring these two over this time? Um, it was. I mean, I don't know. It's just kind of everything's you know very organic. Um, the uh, it was a, a mutual. Uh, we've got a number of mutual friends, and um, someone was just like, you know, you guys would get on well. And I, so I've got to be honest with you, they've, they've been easy as hell to work. Nothing but um, positive things to say. Um, really, 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 genuinely. Nothing they get nice and easy. Um, uh, it started with um, them asking you know, who you know, would, would like to bring someone over. Uh, you know, can you recommend uh, you know, a talent? Uh, so I, you know, and and it's one thing to, you know, just work with people that are already established. Really, you've got to think about the future. Uh, and it's kind of like cheating when it's just, oh, well, this person's, you know, already on top. And this person's doing amazing. It's like, well, let's, let's, let's not do that. Let's grow the scene. Let's not just make that one. And so I, I said Nightshade. And Nightshade went over there and tore it up, basically. Everyone loved her. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it just kind of carried on from there. So, you know... Um, it's just in the, in the interest of everyone and growing the scene. There's no ego or anything along those lines. It's just about you know making sure that you're providing for uh, the future. You know? and they've got a very similar mindset uh, to us thus far in terms of you know when it comes to working with talent. Good. So, before you brought over, like, uh, recently you guys brought over Got to a Move. I mean, do you guys purposely on shows, do you like, kind of bring, like, certain crews over at one time and not mix the crews up too much? No, not really. It's just how it sometimes works out. What it is, it's more that Emmy's been a part of Eve since 2011. Mm-hmm. So, Emmy's, Emmy, Emmy has been a regular, you know, for, um, you know, what's that, like, nine years nearly? So, it's not, you know, when Emmy was coming over, there was no Got to Move. Mm-hmm. Um, she was, you know, she was running Ice River. Um, and uh, then she, when she came and, you know, I mean, Emmy even had a run as the EU champion, you know, back in 2012, 2013. So uh, it's, you know, I love uh, Gatling. My heart is with Gatling. I think anyone that goes there, you know, goes to... Maki! <laughs> oh, Maki, come back this way. Let, no, dri- drivers here will run you down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, I'm the <into> drivers. <laughs> uh, sorry. The, uh, <laughs> well, at least it's the same side of the road uh, as Japan. It's not like it's we're here in America. Um, we just wait, wait for the green dude. Um, so, so yeah, it's more that um, Emmy has has just been a part. Fuck it, let's go. <laughs> right. Okay. Back with you. Right. So. Um, <laughs> 
so it, yeah, yeah, it's more yeah. that she's just you know, been a part of the new house. So I can first time Emily came over to you know, with Ice Ribbon, so it was her, Hikaru Shiba, Sakata Fujimoto, and um, Hikaru Minami. Um, <laughs> the, the second time it was Emmy and Kaori Yodayama. Um, the third time we just brought Emmy back by herself. Uh, I think the fourth time was Emmy back by herself as well. So it's just more that Emmy has been a part of the E roster for like you know, over eight years. Um, and then, you know, we went over to Japan last year. And, you know, we saw Mei Saruga, and she's amazing. And it's just I like you can see just someone that's just like a natural, you know, like she's just uh, incredible. So it was just like it just made sense that with she won coming up, we, you know, we always have uh, a strong international mm-hmm. presence as part of she won. And we wanted May to be a part of it. She brought something different and just like jazz. Do you know what I mean? So the idea of like doing May Saruga versus jazz. That, that was know, amazing. That, that was amazing. That's my mindset, man. I like doing stuff that's different. Like, um, you know, I like, I mean, you, you do the stuff that people want to see and is the obvious, like, like this weekend, you know, not playing it down, but, you know, Martina and Mackie is going to be incredible. Um, but it's also good to, you know, throw people that are polar opposites, you know, in there against one another as well. And, and May and Jazz was just a whole world of fun. Um, tell, me, uh, tell me about the, the phenomenon that is Lulu Pencil, how she got was. <laughs> How she was received. Lula Pencil is a Marmite wrestler. Like 90% of um, the audience you know, know, loved her. When I mean love, I mean love. You know what I mean? And then there are some that are just like, what? what is this? This isn't what I want from my wrestling. And that's fine. You know what I mean? That's the thing about wrestling as a circus. There's something for everyone. And um, I, I love, personally, I, I adore Lula Pencil. Um, I love the fact that. You know, she's a prime example of fashion wrestling can be anything. Um, you know, uh, when I was in, you know, one of my favorite wrestlers was Antonio Honda. And so, you know, uh, people who are, you know, understand that, you know, it's great character. And a lot of it, you know, the Lulu Pencil is also down to Emmy. Because Emmy just looked at Lulu and just went, this is, this is, let's, let's just have you be here. You know, where so many people wouldn't give someone like Lulu that chance, you know? Um, Emmy's not like that. Emmy is uh, someone that believes that you know every, wrestling's for everyone, and everyone should get the opportunity to try something. And uh, and because Gato that, move, you know, this, like you Gato say, move. Is Lulu Gato move is the reason I started this podcast. I, I met Lulu and Emmy and in, in May this past September, and they're the reason why I started this podcast. Because I, I wanted to share uh, the. Yeah, you know, Emmy doesn't get the, the credit and respect that she deserves because she has had a far bigger impact on the, the wrestling scene than I think wrestling fans understand. And like, and I, and I love the guys at AEW, but I don't think they've presented Emmy the, the correct way. Um, I, I, you know, I think they've kind of missed a, uh, missed a beat there with her because she's... I've, I've never been at a show where... Um, where Emmy hasn't gotten over it. Just let Emmy be Emmy. You know, don't don't direct her or try to, you know, leave her down one way. You know, um, you know, talk to her, work with her. And uh, you know, I've never seen a, a show that Emmy doesn't get over. And so, you know, it's really cool to finally see like the work that she's put in. You know, start to get um, more recognition. Um, All right, let's because. Let's... Let's take a look at the Wrestle Queendom card real quick. Here. It sounds like sounds like you have your hands full over there with those couple, the, the Maki <laughs> and, and Yuka. Sorry for, sorry for this. No, 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 don't say sorry at all. It's, it's this is awesome. All right, so uh, talk about some of the bigger matches for Eve, not the from the outsiders, but for the the Eve regulars. Um, the what for for Queendom this weekend? Yes. Yeah, I mean, you know, the the whole show. Uh, there's always there's always like special I don't want to say special I hate the term special attraction but there's always interesting you know first time matches on there so you know as uh, for as far as the Eve Faithful is concerned you know the Eve audience I think you know the big match for the Eve Championship um, those who uh, you know it, it's that it's that old you know old story of you know good friends better enemies mm-hmm. uh, and it's the first time these two have ever had a match against one another. Um, you know, it's a, it's a match that's like six months, you know, in the making. Um, you know, there'll be uh, the 
the, the pre-show package for that will be released on Saturday as well. Uh, but that is a match that I think that you know, like the faithful, is really looking forward to, you know, to seeing. It's one of the things that we try to do at Eagles work with the talent rather than just say, right, you're going to do this, this, and this. And so what you often see is the version of Laura Di Matteo they see at Eagles is, is you know different to the version of Laura Di Matteo they see elsewhere. And I think that's because of you know working with them, letting them be more themselves, you know, come out and um, giving them you know longer matches and uh, time you know time to tell their story so i'm really looking forward to that and i think most of the eve audiences there's the new tag team titles now this is actually the main event of the show you know the the youth championship is the co-main the youth tag team championship is the match that we're going on last and that's sammy jane and giselle shaw versus the white queens versus the medusa complex um you know i know that we're all trying not to get hit by this giant stage truck at the moment it's decided to come down a pedestrian Sorry, there we go. <laughs> they, um, you know, it, which, you know, there's, you know, I caught, you know, some some people like, you know, tag team titles aren't, aren't main event titles. And it's just like because of how West, you know, Western wrestling has treated tag team wrestling. Um, but uh, tag team wrestling, you know, can be main event, you know, because it's, it's just another division. Um, so, you know, that, that's the match that will be going to last. And that's, that's the match that I'm really looking forward to seeing as well. Because I think when tag team wrestling is done right, it's incredible when you've got six amazing, you know, characters and performers going on there. In addition to the debut of North North Diana, uh, North Phoenix Diana against. I was going to I was going to ask you about her. Yes. Yeah, no, she's she's incredible, and also uh, you know prior to that, uh, exclusively free on demand, we've got as uh, Ginny versus Nina Samuels. And, I, I, um, I kind of tweeted still. I kind of tweeted the other day that this was a kind of a jo- uh, guy Jin All Stars. Yeah, I guess so. Well, that's kind of Eve anyway. You know, so uh, yeah, like uh, if you if you watch Josie, you know, then you're probably going to know a number of our, you know, talent. Um, and uh, if you don't, yeah, you will do. So let's talk about the two uh, Joshi performers there, uh, Yuka Sakazaki. Uh, how familiar were, were you with her before you you brought her over? Oh, very. I mean, I always pay attention. Um, you know, I think she's a great uh, performer. Um, and, and it's just a case of bringing something different, um, you know. And I think Yuki Sakazaki is an exciting performer and someone that hasn't like really like come into her own yet either, which I think is the most exciting part. And that's why you know she's matched up against Lana Rustin, as well as the emotional aspects of it. The, the fact of the matter is as well, she's uh, um, uh, you know Lana hasn't come into her best you know uh, size yet either. So um, I'm really looking forward to that. And then we have the amazing Maki versus uh, Martina, which is. When you guys announced that, the internet went, went kind of crazy. There's nothing that I can say to sell that. You know, I shouldn't have to say anything to sell that. You know, just look at them. I'm not giving. They literally, you know, said to me earlier, you know, how long? And I'm just like, you tell me. I, I'm not getting involved in that. You guys sell it yourselves. You know, like that's 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 what I mean about friends. You know, like working with the talent rather than you know giving them directions of you know too much directions and overproduce. Have you taught? Uh, has uh, are you going to teach uh, Maki what bands means? Um, yeah, I think that one's for um, uh, for for Kaza to, to to teach her. Um, I think I'm more worried about some of the words that my wife Emily's going to teach her. So that's 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 one of the things I'm more worried about. We, we've I mean, all seen Maki. We've all seen Maki's Twitter. We know she learns new words all the time. Yeah, I think I, what was it? Um, Emily. Emily I think it was Emily taught um, Emily taught Ibushi bucket fan. So um, God knows what on earth she's got in her mind when it comes to Matthew. Which is just weird. Like, I just walk in. I was the last one to arrive there. I walk into Nando's. You know, there's Ibushi and, uh, uh, and Osprey, and they're like, Dad, 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 stop, stop, Ibushi, say it. And he just goes bucket fan as loud as he possibly can in the middle of a Nando's family restaurant. <laughs> God, so God knows what Emily's going to teach her and where she's going to choose to teach her. <laughs> well, I, again, I want to thank you for joining the show. Uh, real excited to, sh- uh, to, to see the show. I've been uh, tweeting about it quite often. I've been plugging it pretty much every week on the show. Uh, real excited for it. And uh, you can, everybody can listen to it or, or catch it on Fight TV. Yep, it's on Fight TV. It's a uh, 7.30 start for the, for the Fight broadcast on Saturday night. And it's only nine ninety nine dollars as well, so it's an absolute steal. So yeah, it's I've, not often that you got that anyone in the states or anyone outside in the West world will get to see, you know, Maki Ito and Yuka 
against you know on, on Fight TV, you know, you know, in live live broadcast matches. So uh, make the most of it. Any like weird wrestling politics involved with, the, with putting the shows together at all? No. Uh, it's only been um, one, uh, you know, set of individuals where I've had to where, where I've been told, you know, like like this match is impossible, this match is impossible, this match is impossible. Um, uh, so yeah, no, this is um, this is dead easy. Um, yeah, like no, and, and this is the thing. I think I think I, like no disrespect to a lot of fans, but I think fans overplay politics in this. Like there really isn't as much as what um, people are saying. Everyone, for the most part, is easy. Just wants to do business and do business. That 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 makes me very happy to hear. Honestly, it does. Yeah, yeah. It's not as it's 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 not what people. It's, it's not what people like. We had a match between um, Ginny and Joey Lucas on the last Eve show. I didn't even know this, but Ginny's like, oh, Ginny's got the progress title. I knew that. Zoe turns out he's Red Pro Women's Champion. I didn't know that uh, because she's been in Japan so long. I assume someone else had the title. Um, and it, they went to a 15 minute draw. And there were a couple of people on Twitter were like, oh, that's politics. There's nothing to do with politics. You know, like, there's no, no, there was nothing along those lines. Like I say, I, I think people over, you know, overdo the politics of that. Yeah. No, that that makes me happy to hear. I, I've heard stories in the past about that with with other promotions, but I'm real glad. Maybe this is modern modern pro wrestling where where that stuff kind of going going away. I won't. I honestly, I don't like working with. Uh, there are some people that get like that, but I generally, if I'm working with them, then it's not like that because I I can't deal with that mindset. It's like people, it's like people that don't like losing. It's like if you need to win in order to get over, then you really should at your job. Exactly. Well, tell Maki and, and Yuka that I wish them the best, and uh, we'll be watching on Saturday night. Okay, thank you so much. I will do. Thank you. Take care. And, yeah, thanks for having us. Bye-bye.